cross. I shouldn't have arrested him. I shouldn't have tried him. I shouldn't be sending him to the cross. You are taking the advice of Tullius. Barabbas could have been quietly strangled in his cell and you wouldn't have to cope with that crowd outside. If I had listened to Tullius, I would have made a mockery of Roman law and I hate to think what Caesar would have made of me. Ah, oh, the ingratitude of these Jews. When I think of the time I spent bringing the new water system to Jerusalem and the cost. You are a brilliant engineer, pilot. I suppose that's a compliment. Ah, oh, Tullius, at last. Come on. Tullius, we need your advice. Perhaps you could indicate a little more clearly what you have in mind. Something that will sit well with Caesar. As you know, Caesar has ordered no compromise with the Jewish extremists, particularly with mob heroes. You'll have to crucify Barabbas. Do you have an alternative? Is that what you call advice? Do you understand what's going on out there? Do you want this demonstration to turn into another uprising? If you don't crucify him, you'll offend Caesar. On the other hand, if you do, I suppose you'll have an angry mob at your throat. Thank you, Claudia. That's exactly what I need at this moment. My wife's analysis of the obvious. Right. There is, of course, one possibility. They know that on their Passover, you perform an annual act of mercy. By commuting the death sentence of one Jew. Symbolic and probably a mistake. Last year, I seem to remember it was an arsonist. And this year? Are you seriously suggesting that I free Barabbas? A Jew who has murdered a Roman soldier? No, oh, there's got to be another way. I will not surrender to these barbarians. Since this is meant to be a magnanimous Roman gesture to a conquered people, why not take it a stage further and allow them to make the choice? Listen, they've made the choice. Exactly. You offer them another criminal, they choose Barabbas. It's no longer your decision. Bar Abbas. Listen to it. These days I can understand you must hate leaving the peace of the temple. The peace of the temple. How long will that last? I don't envy you. Not the easiest time to be high priest of Judea. Indeed not, Nicodemus. Barabbas kills one Roman soldier and the Romans retaliate. A hundred for one. It's not the kind of arithmetic I favor. Do any of us. Revolutionary zealots. Their heroics cost precious Jewish blood. Oh, uh, Joseph Caiaphas. I am grateful to Barabbas for one thing. If nothing else, he's taking your mind off Jesus. Well, that depends on whether you have made my warning to him clear. You know, this heretic has been seen just outside the city. I'll then dare enter it once again, and I will have him arrested by the temple guard. There's the well. There's the man with the pitcher. Peter, how could he know that the man with the pitcher was going to lead us to the sin? He arranged it. You can't all be miracles, you know. There's a practical side to him, too. Peter. <laughs> Where are you from? Galilee. Both of you? Yes. Occupation. Fisherman. Name. Simon. What's your Jew name? Shimon Bayona. And yours? John. Hebrew name, Yohanan. You don't smell like fishermen. We wash for Passover. <laughs> you fish with the sword in Galilee? Man has to protect himself. Is it against the law in Jerusalem? Move on. Hey! 
What do they think of Barabbas in Galilee? We don't know him. Of course. You were all faithful subjects of Caesar in Galilee. We render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and to God what is God's. That is too well put for a fisherman. Who said that? A rabbi. And what belongs to Caesar? Taxes. And your God? Love. <laughs> Excellent. We could do with more Jews like your rabbi. On your way. I am Jacob. Peter. John. Come with me. When is he coming into the city? In time for the Seder. I was hoping he changed his mind. It's foolish, very foolish. He knows the danger. Then why? I suppose he would say the prophet Isaiah predicted it. And the prophet Isaiah didn't attack the courtyard of the temple and drive the merchants and money changers out with a whip. What is the one thing these Jews are really passionate about? Their religion. What if we were to arrest one of their high priests, for instance? Oh, you're insane. Don't you worry, my dear. It wouldn't be practical, would it? But it does point the way. Their religious council, the Sanhedrin. Thank you, Tullius. They're against Barabbas. They don't like zealots and revolutionaries any more than we do. Now, if we could find someone that they dislike who has also violated Roman law... You'd have the same problem, you'd just have another Barabbas. Not if he has no political supporters, no mob behind him. There is a rabbi. A Galilean, I believe. And a few days ago, he started a rampage in their temple. His name is Yoshua Bar Yosef. How do you know? I've seen him. Well, I don't care who he is, as long as he's broken the law and arresting him won't provoke further demonstrations. What if he's innocent? He's a Jew, Claudio. I'll look into it if you like. Yes, do. Before they start shutting themselves up for their interminable ceremonies. When will the others be arriving? Later. After we've seen the room, I'll go back to the well and wait to leave them here for the Seder. My servants will look after you tonight. Thank you, Jacob, but that won't be necessary. I want to, Peter. It's the least I can do. Anything. Anything I can do, I'm at his service. Jacob, thank you. Prepare the table for 
I've been talking to some people who just arrived from Galilee. There's been rioting there. The Romans have killed more than a dozen people for protesting against Barabbas' sentence. Do you think these people were sinners? Above all other sinners in Galilee? And that is why this happened to them? Of course not. It happened to them because they were Jews protesting against Roman tyranny. And when the Tower of Shiloh fell in Jerusalem, they killed 18 men. Do you think it was because they were sinners? Do you, Judas? No, I don't. They were killed because the mortar was badly mixed and they happened to be working on the tower. What does that have to do with the massacre in Galilee? I'm saying that whoever does not repent will perish in one of many ways. I understand. What I don't understand is why, even though I'm not from Galilee, I seem to care what happens to patriots there more than anyone else. Whatever happens in Galilee is small compared to what will happen when the day of judgment comes. And it is coming. What Judas is saying, Rabbi, is that if anyone must be killed before the day of judgment, let it be the Romans. He wants to reach God's kingdom without having to die on the way. I would die for a cause I believe in. No man wants to die. Then why are you going into Jerusalem tonight? Knowing that... Knowing what? What everyone knows. That there are men who wish him dead. It is necessary that the Son of Man go into Jerusalem on the Passover, suffer at the hands of the lawyers and the priests, be betrayed and crucified, and then raised on the third day. Why don't you ever say directly that you are he? Judas, stop asking questions. Let him ask. I want to believe. I do believe, but we're young. There are many Passovers ahead and a lot to do here and now. But I can't help thinking that as a Jew, you could use the powers we've all witnessed to help other Jews like Barabbas, who fight the Romans. You think too much, Judas, and feel too little. But that is as it should be. I have given you and the others certain powers. Use that power well. And I'm asking you to help me use it, to strengthen the unity of the Jews against the conquerors of Israel. You haven't listened, Judas. You seem to think that I have come to bring what you call peace on earth. For you, the earth is Israel, the only enemy, Rome. You must think in broader terms, Judas. You have all been with me for a long time seen what I have seen. Misery, corruption, vengeance. There will be no peace yet. Nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and fearful signs from heaven. I'm quoting you, Master. I want to give you an eloquence and a wisdom that your enemies will not be able to resist. 
It will not be easy. You must be secure in heart, or you will be alone, betrayed by your friends, and even by your family. You are the master of the house, but you should have asked me. Why, Ruth, I've never doubted your hospitality. Passover is a family feast. Why take risks? Some people are worth taking risks for. And he is one of them. What do you think will happen if they find him here? Happen? Does something have to happen? Jacob, every child in the street knows what Jesus did in the temple and to you, among others. It's Pesach, Ruth. Please. What do you think will happen if they find him here? You'll be ruined. Yes, perhaps. You find humor in ruin? No. But something inside me finds a certain joy in his words. Every time I hear him speak, it's like an illumination. What profits a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? Before I became your disciple, I knew a lot of the people who are now your enemies. When we came to Jerusalem, I didn't think they'd recognize me. But they did. The first day of the temple, they tried to talk to me. I know. How? I saw them. Well, why didn't you tell me? Oh, you confuse me. Why do you think I've been trying to stir up your anger over what happened in Galilee? To turn me back to Galilee. Now? Yes. I've seen you angry before. Why not now? Of all my disciples, I've sometimes felt closest to you because you've understood my words best. But what you expect of me, Judas, is so much and so little. Life here, instead of life eternal through my death. If you think you can change that, for my sake and yours, I shall neither stop you, nor judge you. What do you mean? I'd rather die. I know that, too. Come. Each of you will make your way into the city so as not to attract attention. This is most important. Nothing must happen until the Seder is over. Each of you will make your way to the well. Peter will be waiting there to take you to the Seder. Go now. And be careful. The truth, Nicodemus, is that something will have to be done about this troublemaker from Galilee. <laughs> Joseph Arimathea and I are not the only members of the Sanhedrin who see no wrong in Jesus, apart from a few departures from the Torah. A few? Allow me. I have studied the law longer than any of you. So I begin. Breaking the Sabbath, placing himself above family loyalties, exploiting the words of the prophets. Which he knows and quotes without fault. Contributing to public panic by predicting the end of the world 
vandalizing the temple and using magic tricks to seduce gullible people who need miracles. And you see no wrong in these things? If the angel saved Isaac, and the walls fell down at Joshua's trumpet, and Moses brought the plagues on Egypt, why shouldn't miracles happen? Because those were ancient times. And who knows what happened? This is today, now, modern times in Jerusalem. Face reality, we're a conquered people, Nicodemus. The miracle we need has nothing to do with making wine out of water. Apart from the miracles, and you know how things get exaggerated. He's done very little more than most of us have done at one time or another. When was the last time you claimed to be the Messiah? Can't you control your son's tongue? Aaron, please. You know. Forgive me, Father. Good Pesach, gentlemen. <coughs> oh, uh, Father, there was uh, a Roman officer at the gate a while ago asking questions. About what? He was particularly interested in Jesus. Did he say why? I thought you'd like to know, so I asked him. And? He answered me with a question. Where is Yeshua bar Yosef in perfect Hebrew? Well, what did you tell him? The truth, what else that I don't know? But no Roman ever believes a Jew. They've been talking about him for the last hour. Have you ever seen him? Yes. I've also heard him speak. Where? In the synagogue. Jesus' crime is not in his claim that he is the Messiah. The prophets tell us to expect one in these years. No. The blasphemy is in his heresy. And that is so monstrous that even were he a model Jew in all other respects, it would damn him. What heresy? I'm aware of no heresy. Because you are not a religious scholar, Nicodemus. Heresy that demands the understanding of a religious scholar can hardly be serious. The voice of the Philistines. That's enough, Aaron. Try to understand. On the day of judgment, how will the one and only God, blessed be his name, judge us? By our faith in him. No. You are as wrong as he is. Judgment depends on what you do. The way you conduct your life every day. God judges you for your honesty, your charity, your love for your family, your obedience to his law. I mean, faith in itself is not enough. Every, every Jew believes in God. You have to work for his judgment. Jesus says the same thing. He says to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to take care of the sick. Where is the heresy? The heresy is that he claims the power to forgive sin. Only God has that power. He says, along with the other radicals, that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And in this, he is putting himself above the law which God has given us. And above all, he says, believe in me and you will be saved. Don't you understand? If, if you are a thief, a whore, a murderer, if you dishonor your father and your mother, just repent of your sin and he will forgive you. Believe in him and you will be saved. Not believe in the law and obey the law and be saved, but him. He is cutting at the very heart of Judaism. Messiah. Their old manuscripts and sacred books predict one just about now. No one really believes in it. But um, since his arrival signals the end of the world, aspiring messiahs like Jesus tend to make the Jews a little nervous. Mm. But is he a criminal? Their lawyers and rabbis take a poor view of him. I have a strange feeling that given the uh, proper encouragement, they might even charge him with blasphemy. Uh, that's not enough. The Jew we want must also have violated Roman law, or at least appeared to have done so. There's an old political device, Tullius. It's called a fixed trial. This report says that he calls himself king. King of the Jews? That's not bad. That could be read as sedition. There's only one king, and that's Caesar. But 
what if he is the Messiah? How could he be the Messiah? He's not even a good Jew. Nevertheless, what if he is? Wouldn't that put you, Joseph, as the spiritual guide of the Jewish people in a somewhat delicate position? I don't think we should do him the honor of allowing him to spoil our Passover, nor to divide us any further. We all agree on that, I hope. If only he'd stayed in Galilee. Excuse me, Master. A Roman soldier just bought this. He said he'd wait. It's from Pilate. He wants to see me at once. About the Passover pardon? No. About Jesus. I'm sorry it took so long. I stopped to get this. It's a list of the men who travel with Jesus. Oh, what purpose? They may try to help him escape. I've tried to find out as much about them as possible. They're mostly fishermen. Fishermen? <laughs> Go on. The two known as Peter and Andrew are in partnership with James and John. They seem to have employed several of the others at one time or another. Well, Claudia, now you know where to get fresh fish. Shall I go on? <laughs> yes, Thomas, please do. Simon, also called Peter, Hebrew name Shimon Bar Yona, native of Bethsaida. Most prominent of the twelve, he is constantly with Jesus and known to be closest to him. His house in Capernaum is their headquarters in Galilee. Matthew, Hebrew name Levi Bar Halpai, a pseudonym, means the Lord's gift, ex tax collector for Herod. Philip, also known as Pinchas, thought to be a disciple of John the Baptist, who was, incidentally, decapitated by Herod. Andrew, Hebrew name Andarai Bar Yona, brother of Peter, also a disciple of John the Baptist and one of the first to follow Jesus. Thomas, Hebrew name Toma, believed to have less conviction about Jesus than the others, place of birth and occupation unknown. John, Hebrew name Yohanan, Son of a Galilean fisherman named Zebedee, believed to have been born at Bethsaida, has a brother named James. James, Hebrew name Yaakov bar Zebedee. Jesus refers to the two as the sons of thunder, reason unknown. Simon, Hebrew name Shimon. Peter's name was Simon until Jesus changed it to avoid confusion with this one. Nathaniel means gift of God. Hebrew name bar Talmai comes from the village of Cana in Galilee, brought into the group by Philip. James the Younger, Hebrew name Yaakov Bar Halpai, occupation unknown. Thaddeus, Hebrew name Levi Bar Tadai, occupation fisherman, not much else is known. Judas Iscariot, Hebrew name Yehuda Ishkarioth, comes from a family of leather workers, of the twelve, he is the only one not a Galilean. Keeps and dispenses the group's money. Probably the brightest of the lot. I am the high priest, Joseph Caiaphas. Yes, Rabbi, I know. The procurator is expecting you. Come this way, please. I'll wait here. He'll understand. Understand what? That a Jew defiles himself by entering the home of a Gentile. I'll be back. You say you want no trouble this Passover, no demonstrations, no fighting in the streets. No, we don't. Then why haven't you arrested him? We can't during Passover. Why not? I've seen your temple guards arresting pickpockets. Pickpockets, yes, Excellency. This is not quite the same thing. I want him arrested and brought to trial. 
it's against our law to convene the Sanhedrin for a trial on Passover. You're not obliged to call it a trial. Thank you, Excellency. But it's more complicated than that. He has a highly volatile following. You mean revolutionary and dangerous? Besides, we don't know exactly where he is. Oh, I know you, Rabbi. If Jesus is what you say he is, you'll have someone keeping track of things. You'll find him. We have warned him to stay away from the city. Have you now? On pain of what? You know we Jews are not allowed to carry out the death sentence. That's right. You can only condemn. That's an arrangement that should suit you, Rabbi. We Romans take the final guilt upon ourselves. How long have you people been doing business in the court of the temple? Five, six hundred years. Mm. It's the center of their daily life, isn't it? Much like our forum in Rome. You don't want him to start another riot there, do you? Of course not. He's not going to go away, Rabbi. I want you to arrest him, find him guilty, and turn him over to me. Guilty of what? Whatever you wish. But find him guilty. Excellency, I must tell my people something. It should satisfy your people to know that I am doing this to prevent bloodshed in their fair city. Then why don't you have your troops arrest him? You know, Joseph Caiaphas, there are a dozen men who would give anything to be appointed high priest in Jerusalem. I'm sure there are, Excellency. As many as covered your office of procurator in Judea. I will not warn you a second time. Why is Jesus so important to you? Why do you... Why my patience like this? I was only thinking of what could possibly be to our mutual benefit. I apologize. But if you could instruct your troops to... Do your work for you, is that it? Our work, Excellency. Besides, your men are so much more efficient than mine. <laughs> All right. I'll strike a bargain with you. You find him. You arrest him. And my troops will be there to back up your temple guards. How's that? Hmm? Tell me, do you people really believe that Passover story? I mean, do you really believe that the Red Sea parted so that you could escape the Egyptians? <laughs> we escaped, Excellency. Is it then? Did you steal it? No. I believe you. Uh, give it to me. It belongs to other people. Who? The friends of mine. Oh, that's what I thought. And I know the names of at least one. Of course, I know yours. You're Judas. Judas of Carrioth. No, you're mistaken. No, I'm not. They pointed you out to me the other day at the temple. What do you want? To know who else is in the city? Jesus, for instance. I don't know where he is. I swear, I don't. The one you'll have to convince is the high priest. 
What possible interest can Pilate have in Jesus? If anything, Jesus has gone out of his way not to offend the Romans. I know Pilate. He has some devious purpose in this. Well, from what you've said in the past, I should think you'd be happy to hand Jesus over to him. Jesus is dividing us with his fanaticism. And anyone who divides us feeds the Romans. If I had not listened to you and his other so-called friends, I would have had him arrested after the outrage of the temple. Done what with him? The right thing by my conscience. I would have had him tried for heresy by a properly convened Sanhedrin. With Passover, that is out of the question. What will you do, my son? I'll try to find him. And if you do find him? I will do whatever has to be done. Even to handing him over to Pilate? Yes, Nicodemus, yes! The survival of our people hangs by a very thin thread, and I will not have it threatened that much for the sake of any one man. We must see the high priest. I'm sorry I can't disturb him. He has guests. Important guests. Do as you're told, and quickly. Don't worry. It's not you they're after. Yes. Good pace, Ak Rabbi. And to you. I have someone here I think you'd like to see. Who is he? He's one of Jesus' disciples. We spotted him coming into the city. He was alone? Yes. What is your name? Tell him. Judas. Speak up. Judas of Kerioth, Rabbi. Bring him in. You say he is not in the city? No. Then he is outside the city? I don't know. He is making his way into the city, is he not? His destination, Judas, you must know that. I don't. Why do you refuse to tell us? Because I love him. You also have your duty as a Jew. He feels he has his duty. What he feels is dividing the Jewish people at a time when it is desperately important that they act in unity. That has to be stopped, Judas. It's painful to betray what you love. Do you think that a God-fearing Jew, be it you or any other, should lie to his spiritual leaders? Would Jesus lie? No. Then do as he would. What will you do to him? That must be for us to decide. If his destiny is to be betrayed by one of his own, it's right it should fall upon me. I've already committed that sin in my mind. Even today he was trying to tell me. And now I understand. My only concern is not to protect myself, but him until the Seder is over. It is what he wants, and I have the power to do it by striking a bargain with you. A bargain? Is that really what it comes down to? I assure you, you will be rewarded for your services. I don't want any reward. So? I can't tell you where he is, because I truly don't know yet. But someone is waiting to take me to him. And if you detain me any longer, that person will go, and I'll have no way of finding him. And if you release me, but insist on having me followed, I shall refuse to go. And nothing you can do will force me. That much free will I still have. You're free to go. We must see the high priest. I'm sorry, I can't disturb him. He has guests. Important guests. Do as you're told, and quickly. Don't worry. It's not you they're after. Yes. Good pace, Ak Rabbi. And to you. I have someone here I think you'd like to see. Who is he? He's one of Jesus' disciples. We spotted him coming into the city. He was alone? Yes. What is your name? Tell him. Judas. Speak up. Judas of Kerioth, Rabbi. 
Bring him in. You say he is not in the city? No. Then he is outside the city. I don't know. He is making his way into the city, is he not? His destination, Judas, you must know that. I don't. Why do you refuse to tell us? Because I love him. You also have your duty as a Jew. He feels he has his duty. What he feels is dividing the Jewish people at a time when it is desperately important that they act in unity. That has to be stopped, Judas. It's painful to betray what you love. Do you think that a God-fearing Jew, be it you or any other, should lie to his spiritual leaders? Would Jesus lie? No. Then do as he would. What will you do to him? That must be for us to decide. If his destiny is to be betrayed by one of his own, it's right it should fall upon me. I've already committed that sin in my mind. Even today he was trying to tell me. And now I understand. My only concern is not to protect myself, but him until the Seder is over. It is what he wants. And I have the power to do it by striking a bargain with you. A bargain? Is that really what it comes down to? I assure you, you will be rewarded for your services. I don't want any reward. So? I can't tell you where he is because I truly don't know yet. But someone is waiting to take me to him. And if you detain me any longer, that person will go and I'll have no way of finding him. And if you release me but insist on having me followed, I shall refuse to go. And nothing you can do will force me. That much free will I still have. You're free to go. I'll come back in a few hours and lead you to him. Can we trust you? I think we can. Whatever you may think of me, I trust you to see I'm not followed. Traitors, trust. Trouble? No. Just crowns. You're the last one. Why did you insist on coming to Jerusalem tonight? Since I was first taken to the synagogue. And since the days when I was a child and helped my mother carry water from the well in Nazareth. It was in me to be here tonight. Every man has a destiny. There's no denying it. You have a destiny, Peter. <laughs> and it will sweep you along like the tide sweeps the sand. And if your enemies succeed in destroying you? Alive, I am but a voice for the few. And death, I shall be the light for many. Do you want to die then? No. No, Peter. With all my heart, I do not want to die. But unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But only if it dies will it bear fruit.
I think you have all you need. Thank you, Jacob. And thank your wife. I know she must be worried, so please tell her I shall be leaving as soon as the Seder is over. Where will you go? Better for you not to know. Good Pesach to you, Rabbi. And to you, Jacob. From you, there will be no secrets. Tonight, above all other nights. Where have I gone to pray these last days? Gethsemane. Now you know where I will go from here. And then you will see me no more. What? What are you saying? But no, Rabbi, I, I don't understand. I'm coming back to you. In a little while, the world will see me no longer, but you will see me. Because I live, you too will live. And then you will see that I am in my father, and you in me, and I in you. The man who receives my commands and obeys them loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him. Mark! Mark! Yes, father? I like being with you. Is it wrong? No. Can I be a disciple? <laughs> Knowing my secrets makes you one already, doesn't it? Hmm? Run along now. <sighs> Master. Yes, Thomas. Have we not always gone where you have gone? Always. But where I go tonight, you cannot follow. It's hard to accept. Thomas, isn't it enough I tell you what you should know already? Why? I will follow you now, anywhere, to prison. Soda. Yes, Soda. 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 Peter, Peter. Before this night is over, you will deny me, not once, but three times, as the cock crows. Deny you? Take me. I will give my life for you. So will I. So will I. So will I. So will I. Stop it! Do you want the whole of Jerusalem to hear us? Shall we start the Seder? It will be our last together. אשר קידשנו במצוותיו, וציוונו להדליק נר של יום אתו. אמן. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, בורא פרי הגפן. אמן. ברוך 
ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם שהחיינו וקיימנו הגיענו לזמן הזה Amen. Blessed art thou, eternal our God, King of the universe, who created the fruit of the earth. This is the bread of affliction, which our forefathers ate in the land of Egypt. you wonder why this night is different from all other nights? Yes, Grandfather. So why don't you ask? Why is this night different from all other nights? Slaves we were unto Pharaoh in the land of Egypt. On all other nights, we may eat either leavened bread or unleavened bread. This night, we may eat only unleavened. Because our people ate it as they followed Moses, who made our tribes a holy nation, beloved by God. It is called the bread of affliction. And why? Because our people left Egypt in such haste that the women had no time to leaven the bread. And we eat bitter herbs to remind us that our people's bondage in Egypt was bitter. And we eat lamb in the body of which no bone has been broken because it symbolizes Israel whole and undivided. Ah, long for the day when I can leave this sandbox of a country. I can't imagine why I find it so fascinating. Mm, there's an atmosphere. The gods of an ancient people, the prophets of Israel. You almost expect to see one of them coming around the corner. Did you know that at their Passover ritual, the Jews always save an empty place for the prophet Elijah? He's the one who prophesied the coming of the Messiah. They mean that. They believe it. It's a very literal religion. Are you implying we don't believe, Tellius? No, I'm afraid we don't, my dear lady. No fashionable Roman seriously worships the gods anymore. Well, if you've conquered the world, and we have, you don't need the gods. We need them even more. How many countries have we conquered in the name of our gods? How many people have we slaughtered in the name of our gods? How many slaves oh, have... All right, Claudia, you've made your point. How many of their synagogues have been destroyed by how many conquerors? <laughs> and according to Jesus of Nazareth, the temple in Jerusalem is about to be leveled to the ground. That prediction hasn't made him very popular with his fellow Jews. <laughs> it doesn't do any good to destroy their temples. It's in their heads. And you can't cut off that many heads, can you, dear? Someone's going to try to sooner or later. By the gods, they're stubborn people. Excellency. From the high priest Caiaphas. Jesus of Nazareth is in the city. One of his disciples will deliver him to us tonight. A traitor? And why should the Jews be immune to treachery any more than we are? How many men should I detail? A dozen? Oh, ten should be enough. That was merely matching numbers. Jesus has a dozen. Minus one. Hear me now. I wanted to spend this Passover with you. Because it will be my last. I will not eat of bread until the prophecy of Elijah is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is here.
eat this. But this is my body, which will be sacrificed for your sake. Drink this, for this is my blood, which is shed for you, so that you may be saved. From this moment on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until I have suffered, and the kingdom of heaven has come. Thomas, do it as my memorial. But it's only bread and wine. This is a new covenant, a bond between us that will last forever. When you receive this, you are receiving me. Listen to me and understand what I say now, so that the prophecies may be fulfilled. I tell you that one who eats bread with me will lift up his heel against me. I tell you this before it happens, so that when it happens you may know that I am he. One of you will betray me. Betray. It is one of you twelve. He knows. Master. Is it me? You have said it. It's not enough. I need to hear it from you. You are like no man I've ever known. That's why I thought in the beginning you were the Messiah. The Messiah come to free us from Roman domination. I no longer believe this. I don't believe that Roman domination means anything to you at all. But if it did, and you were truly the Messiah, you would sweep them from our land. When the time comes, you will do what you have to do. It's so quiet up there. Do you think they've gone? Not yet. Oh, Jacob, I wish they would. You think of me as your master and lord. And you think well, for so I am. Now, if I, your lord, wash your feet, should you not wash each other's feet? By my example, should you not do for each other what I have done for you? I'm speaking to you of love. And that is my new commandment to you. Love one another as I have loved you. In that way, all people for all time will know my disciples by their love for one another. You're leaving us, and yet there's still time for us to get away together. We could go to Bethany or Ephraim. No. 
I will not go to Bethany or Ephraim. I did not come here tonight to return to Galilee. Understand? All of you. The prophecy must be fulfilled. Do what you have to do. Quickly. What shall I do with this? This not mine. Give it to the poor. Where's he going? Didn't you hear? To give alms to the poor. I am the way. I am the truth. And I am life. In my father's house, there are many mansions. I'm about to go there for the very purpose of preparing a place for you. earlier. He is expecting me. I'm sorry, I can't disturb him now. He's celebrating Passover. He'll want to talk to me. Wait here. Find him? Yes. Where is he? At the house of Jacob the merchant. Aaron! You must hurry. Our Seder is almost over. Perhaps theirs is too. Go to the temple. Tell the guards we are ready. I'll send word to Pilate that the time has come. Look, uh, Father, I'd rather not be involved. You are involved? Like the rest of us. Like it or not. They're going to arrest Jesus. How do you know? That man who was here earlier. He's come back to tell the rabbi where they could find him. Where are you going? I'm leaving Jerusalem. Going home. You can't. I'll need you when we question him. You'll be able to tell us if he speaks the truth. I couldn't do that. I've told you where you can find him. That's all I'm going to do. I just don't want to face him. You have nothing to be ashamed of. You still don't understand. I loved him. I probably still do. I'm only doing this because it's dangerous for all of us to let him go on this way. I'm sorry, Judas. But you must be with us. Good night. Rabbi. Judas. Stop him! You didn't have to do that! Don't provoke them. There's nothing you can do. As you will. Pilot? Why don't you come to bed? Because I'm not tired. Come in. A messenger has come from Caiaphas. They found Jesus. Good. Be sure that it is technically the Jews who make the arrest. And that he is sent to the high priest's house. He must not be brought here. I understand, sir. And if there's resistance, what do you order then? 
You have my permission to kill as many Jews as you think necessary. Keep me informed. Of course. Attention! Quick march! Oh, who goes there? Messenger for King Herod. Is he blind that he can't see it's the middle of the night? Your Majesty, he insists that his orders were to report to you personally. No matter the time. There's no respect in this city, no respect in Judea. No man in Galilee would dare disturb me at this hour. No, sir. Not only is there no respect, but the air is foul. The streets are choked with people. Yes, quite right, Mr. There are beggars everywhere. Flies in the marketplace. Well, what is it? My orders are to report immediately any unusual happenings in Jerusalem during the week of Passover, particularly where they concern the Romans. Pilate? What's he up to in the middle of the night that makes it important to wake me? He was visited this afternoon by the high priest. Are you sure? Yes, Your Majesty. I find it hard to believe that the high priest would soil himself by entering the house of a Gentile. He was in the courtyard, Your Majesty. I saw him go in and I waited for him to come out. Just a little while ago, the centurion, Abenada, marched out with a platoon of Roman soldiers. And? I overheard their conversation. They were on their way to the house of the high priest. It's amazing, isn't it? Perhaps we shall see the day when Jews and Gentiles will be scrubbing each other's backs in the public baths. What else did you overhear? They were going to arrest the one known as Jesus of Nazareth. So, the Nazarene has finally forced their hand just as the Baptist forced mine. Go and report back all you see and hear. I would take it all back now if I could. I dream and dream. But I tell you, I would rather have the Baptist standing in the Jordan River shouting his insanities to the world than lying in my memory as he does. I had his head, you know. The head of John the Baptist on a silver platter. And there was dancing and drinking. Salome. Salome. It's amazing, isn't it? What a man will do for a woman. What's this? Money. For what? Thirty pieces of silver. Do you think I've done this for money? Judas, you don't know the prophecies? Zechariah predicted that the shepherd should be handed over for thirty pieces of silver. Keep it. Jesus is living by the prophecies. I intend to follow his example. Thirty pieces of silver? That may have been a lot of money in Zachariah's day, but now it's a pittance, the price of a slave. Give it to the synagogue. It's blood money. Give it to the potter who keeps that lamb for a free cemetery and buy some poor person a grave. No, Judas. It's yours. Take them to him. You'll have to drag me. Drag him. You will lead them to him, and you will point him out. Do you understand? Do you understand? Bring him! My orders are to accompany your men, not to interfere in the arrest. Only if there's resistance, you might take action. Aaron! Yes, Father. I want you to go with them. But you know how I feel. Go with them.
Coach House. Why have you broken into my house in the middle of the night? Where have they gone? I told you. I don't know. Where is Jesus of Nazareth? We know he was here. Aaron! What are you doing here? My father sent me. Was he ashamed to come himself? We've looked upstairs. The Nazarene's not in the house. If you'll just tell us where he is, you'll save us all a lot of trouble. I don't know. That's the truth. I told you this would happen. You know... Tell us where they went, Judas. We don't want to be at this all night. Perhaps... Perhaps he went back to Galilee. In the middle of the night? Perhaps he went to Bethany? Or Ephraim? <coughs> Gethsemane. The hill with the olive press. Douse your torches. Mary, Mary of Magdala. I was told I could find Jesus of Nazareth here. I know nobody by that name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I bothered you this late. This man you're searching for? Yes. Is he a friend of yours? A friend? Yes. Yes, he is. Prophesied that I will be recorded among the criminals. That is about to happen. You will be hated and persecuted because of me. You will be put to the test. Pray that you will be strong. Now I must be alone. May we watch with you? Watch. And pray. He wants them to take him. Father, the hour has come. I have glorified you on earth. 
I've finished the work you gave for me to do. I've made your name known to the men whom you gave me out of this world. Now they know that all your gifts have come to me from you. And they now speak your word. And now I'm coming to you. But while I'm still in this world, I ask that you protect by the power of your name all those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. For as you have sent me, so also have I sent them. And for their sake I consecrate myself, that they too may be consecrated by the truth. And it is not for these alone, I pray, but for all those who have faith in me. May they all be as one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you. So also may they be in us, that the world may believe that you did send me. Father, the hour has come. Glorify me as I have glorified you. Peter. Peter. Aren't you able to keep awake with me, even for one hour? I know. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. as I will, but as you will. Which one of these men is Jesus of Nazareth? Which one? I am Jesus. Well, what are you waiting for? Take him. Peter, put down your sword. You have me. Let the others go. Let them go. Where do you want him taken? My father's house. And I taught you that those who live by the sword shall perish by the sword? Don't you know that I could pray to my father and legions of angels would defend me? Move. Sleep. 
You look familiar to me. Haven't I seen you with Jesus when he was preaching? Couldn't have. I've never heard him preach. My father-in-law has a great curiosity about this man. I would like to see him before we begin. As you say. Was there any resistance? One of them used a sword. Jesus stopped him. Good. He said, those who live by the sword shall die by the sword. And you were impressed? Yes. I was. If only it were true. Those who live by the sword kill those without swords and live on. Before my son-in-law was appointed by Pontius Pilate, I served for many years as high priest. I have wondered and still wonder what makes a young man like you pose as the savior of the whole world. Are you deranged? We have been told that you are highly intelligent, well-versed in the law, not given to extravagance or indulgence in the grave. We understand that you are unmarried, and we haven't a single report of any scandal about you. We do know that you associate with prostitutes, but you've never been known to take, well, a personal human interest in any of them. Is that true? The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Ah, so you can speak after all. But what does that mean, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first? It means that prostitutes will go into heaven before you. I can see that you are not given to flattery or diplomacy. Indeed, it is your mouth that has fetched you here tonight. Tell me, Jesus of Nazareth. Why do you teach heresy? I have spoken openly, or all the world could listen. I have spoken in the synagogue meetings, and in the temple, and in the open country. Why do you question me? Question those who heard what I said. They know what I said. If I was wrong in speaking this way, then prove me wrong. If I was right, why do you strike me? No, let him be. You, you're one of them. No, I'm not, you're mistaken. Rabbi's expecting you, gentlemen. This man was with him. Even his clothes are Galilean. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't... <laughs> know the man. Jesus of Nazareth, the question of blasphemy has been raised in connection with your preaching. Have you anything to say? Nothing at all? Very well. Let us proceed. Honorable men of the Sanhedrin, here is a man who is supposedly 
against violence, a man who teaches brotherly love. And as such, he comes to Jerusalem. And what is one of the first things he does, this man of love? He goes to the temple, this man of peace, this man of non-violence, and he overturns the tables of the money changers and the benches and cages of the dove sellers. He fashions a whip out of cord and he lashes them out of the court of the temple. The merchants, the sheep, the lambs, the cattle. And throughout it all, he is shouting insanely. Would you tell this august body exactly what it was you were screaming? If you are able to remember, that is. You have turned my father's house into a marketplace. His father's house. Can you imagine that? He calls our holy temple his father's house. This carpenter from Galilee was known to associate with prostitutes and collectors of Roman taxes and all manner of other disreputable people calls our holy temple his father's house. But that really isn't as surprising as it might sound on first hearing. Considering the fact that he also claims to have the power to forgive sins, thereby bestowing upon himself a power our faith reserves to God alone. But neither is that altogether surprising since he also claims to heal the sick, raise the dead, give sight to the blind, feed thousands upon a few loaves and fishes, and walk on water. <laughs> but why not? Since he refers to himself as the son of God. What is the meaning of this? I ask, what is the meaning of this? Welcome, Nicodemus. I'm happy you could join us. Happy I could join you. Is that the reason I was not informed of these proceedings? Please be seated. Let us continue. I demand to know why I was not informed. There was no time to notify everyone. No time? Will you please sit down? Is my friend Joseph of Arimathea present? Or Solomon? Mordecai? Jonathan, Elam, Micah, Azariah. There was no time to inform anyone who might disagree with you. There are many men of the Sanhedrin who are not here. Will you sit down? We have important business to take care of. Yes. You are doing now what you have wanted to do for a very long time. How many times have you sent men to trap him? And how many times have they returned, as I did, impressed with his knowledge of the law, his philosophy, his hatred of hypocrisy, and his love of the truth? I ask you, how many times? Sit down, Nicodemus. Sit down. I tell you, this man is innocent. Sit, sit down, down, sit down. Sit down. He is innocent. As much as I would like to leave out of shame, I will not leave. I will remain here on behalf of the many of our membership who will ask, how could this happen? Shall we hear the evidence? I saw him eating with sinners, with tax collectors and whores. I became very angry. Did you speak to him about it? Yes. I questioned him as to why he did so. He said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. He said he had not come to heal the virtuous, but sinners. He said it is not what goes into the mouth that makes a man unclean. It is what comes out of the mouth that makes him unclean. He did. And? He said that things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And from the heart come evil intentions. Murder, adultery, theft, perjury and slander. And 
But these are the things that make a man unclean. But to eat with unwashed hands does not make a man unclean. And he said that the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. And he said that he himself is master of the Sabbath. I was there when a woman with a bad name in her town came to him. She had been a prostitute for many years. I heard him tell her that her sins were forgiven. Tell us, please. Do you know this man now standing here charged with blasphemy? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not well. But, but I know him. You don't know him well. But tell us, what do you know of him? I was in the synagogue on the Sabbath when Jesus of Nazareth came to teach. Would you tell us, please, what he taught in your synagogue on that Sabbath day? I don't remember all he taught. No, what I remember is the mustard seed. The what? The, the mustard seed. He, he came to your synagogue to teach about mustard seeds? He said that that's what the kingdom of God is like. He said the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed? Yes. Yes, that's it, that's it. He said... The kingdom of God is like... A mustard seed. Everybody knows the mustard seed is the smallest of all seeds. Hey. Once it's sown in the earth, and grows and grows into the biggest shrub before it becomes a tree and, and, and puts out such big branches. This, the birds of the air can build nests in it. Jesus of Nazareth made an impression, I can tell you, <laughs> not just on me, on everybody that was there. In what way did he make an impression, apart that is from the, the story of the mustard seed? Well, you see, he wasn't like the preachers that we are used to, you know. He taught with authority. He taught as if it was coming from him, I mean, not as if it was just being recited out of some old scroll. Or... But we understand that you had some more particular reason to be grateful to this man. Would you tell us about that, please? My soul was possessed at the time. Possessed of an unclean spirit. And Jesus... cleansed me. What do you mean? Well, I mean that the unclean spirit that was in me shouted at Jesus through my mouth, shouted and, and, and said to him, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? You mean you said it? No, 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 the unclean spirit said it, but then, then Jesus said, be quiet, come out of him. And then, I, I don't know what happened, you know, but they tell me that I fell down and, and went into convulsions and the unclean spirit gave a loud cry and, and, and left me. What you have just described is sorcery. Say what you like. He did more for me than anyone else has ever done. He cleansed me. <laughs> Love you. Oh. You mean he worked magic on you?
I had to do it. No. No, I had to. I never wanted the money. One, two, three, four. No. No, that's wrong. You must start again. A one, two, three. Here. Take it. The law, the law states that no bargain is complete until each party has possession of the merchandise. him say, I have the power to destroy the temple of God and in three days build it up. Are you certain you heard him say that? Yes. Did you alone hear it or were there others in your presence? Many others heard him. Do you deny that? Yeshua Bar Yosef, I ask you directly. Are you the anointed one, the son of God? The words are your own. I adjure you by the living God. Tell us outright. Are you the Messiah, the son of God? I am. My father and I are one. Moreover, I tell you that from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of God and coming toward you on the clouds of heaven. <laughs> the man says he is equal with God. He makes himself equal with the Almighty himself. He will be taken to Pontius Pilate to be sentenced. Understand. He didn't have to say it. Why would he condemn himself? Claudia? I couldn't go back to sleep. I haven't been to bed. How long could it take a crowd of Jews to make a case against this man? I dreamed about him. About who? Jesus. I hope you dreamt it all went smoothly. I dreamed he was a god come to earth. Did you? Really? Dream that. Fine. When they bring him here, let him go. Let him go? He's an innocent man. What's wrong with you? Have nothing to do with him. You, you'll regret it otherwise. I'll regret it all right. No, Claudia, I'm sick and tired of your dreams and superstitions. I understand it when it comes from one of the servants, but you're the educated daughter of a senator. 
Maybe they are all dreams and portents, but I believe in our gods and you believe in nothing. I believe in the might and power of Rome. That's what I believe in. You believe in nothing. Are they coming? No, I'm alone. Is his mother here? Yes. She came yesterday from Nazareth. John! I haven't seen you for so long. How is my son? Is he well? What is it? What's wrong? Mary, they took him last night. They arrested him. But it's Passover. Who could have done that? It was Caiaphas and the temple guards. The high priest. And the Romans, too. What will they do to him? I don't know. But at the Seder, he spoke of leaving us. He said that where he was going, we couldn't follow. When they wanted to stone my son in Nazareth, in his own village, I had a premonition. The Romans don't stone people. Romans crucify! It's not certain. For the Passover act of mercy, Pilate will release one Jewish prisoner. It will not be my son who is pardoned. When he was a baby, Joseph and I brought him to the temple in Jerusalem to make the offering. A pair of turtle doves for our firstborn son. There was a holy man called Simeon in the temple. He blessed us. And he said to me, Your son is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel and to be a sign which men reject. And you too shall be pierced to the heart. John, they are going to crucify my son. Thank you, Tullius. If it please the procurator to his imperial majesty, Tiberius Caesar, the High Priest and the Sanhedrin request your endorsement of the sentence. They are also desirous that the sentence be executed this day, before the hour of their Sabbath. Their Sabbath? <clears throat> Can you imagine a whole nation that takes one day off every seven days because their God commands it? Tell them to wait, I'll be down in my own time. Now listen to this. <laughs> the great Sanhedrin in its wisdom and concern for justice has found guilty of blasphemy one Jesus of Nazareth, sorcerer, false prophet, an enemy of Rome who has deceived the people by pretending to be king of the Jews. What arrogance. The high priest is waiting for you in the courtyard, sir. Well, all we need now is the mob screaming Barabbas. They'll be here, it's early yet. By the seventh hour, the courtyard will be jammed. If I believed in the gods, I'd say that they were smiling on me. You have the prisoner with you? We find him guilty of subverting our nation. He calls himself the Messiah and makes himself equal with God. What is his offense against Rome? 
If this man were not a criminal, we should not be handing him over to you. What is his crime against Rome? If there is no provocation, you must deal with him yourselves. Only you have the power to execute. If this particular case does not sit well with you, perhaps you should take it to Caesar. That is your suggestion. I am merely reminding you that it is Caesar's law that forbids Jew to execute Jew. Only Romans can do that. What is his crime against Rome? I need a convincing answer from you. He calls himself our king. Any man claiming to be king is guilty of sedition against Rome. I'll see him inside. By tomorrow morning, all this will be finished and we go back to Caesarea. I can't wait. We shall have to start preparations tomorrow for Caesar's visit. One more demonstration like this morning, and he'll be visiting me at my next post. Some cannibal island on the far side of where dragons be. You're not at all what I expected. They tell me you call yourself the King of the Jews. Are you? The King of the Jews. Do you think I am? Or did you hear it said of me by others? If you are a king, perhaps I am a Jew. Your own high priest has handed you over to me. As his king, what have you to say to that? My kingdom is not of this world. But you are a king. I am a king. For this purpose I was born, and for this purpose I came into the world. To give testimony to the truth. Only he who is open to the truth can hear my voice. What is truth? You know, I have the power to set you free and the power to crucify you. You have no power whatever to harm me unless my father gives it to you. Who are you? even ask me to spare him. Do you think Claudia could possibly be right? Her superstitions never fail to irritate. She once woke me out of a sound sleep and said that one of the gods, I've forgotten which one, had spoken to her in a dream and said that we must both get up and walk around the bed four times. My protest brought me nothing. Can you see it? My wife and I, in the middle of the night, walking around the bed four times. I felt a perfect one. I never did get back to sleep. <sighs> Why can't she believe in nothing as I believe in nothing? In my youth, I worshipped all the gods. I never saw a single sign that one of them even heard me. So I stopped begging the gods for success. And married Claudia. She had the money and the connections, and I became a success at once. <laughs> well, for this trouble with Barabbas, I'd be inclined to let this creature go. Wasn't John the Baptist also a Galilean? Yes. Herod had his head cut off. Herod, yes. He's here for the Passover, isn't he? Yes. I'm going to let Herod deal with this. This man is technically under his jurisdiction. Let him wrestle with it. To what end? Because I think it would be politic. What if he condemns the man? Who will you offer to the crowd instead of Barabbas? If 
Forgive me, Your Excellency. But I think you're allowing your wife's superstitions to cloud your judgment. Thank you. Barabbas won't disappear. It doesn't matter what you do. I can detect no guilt in this man. I've decided to send him to Herod. He has the authority to pass judgment as to whether or no he's seditious, and to sentence him. We're being used. I don't understand what he's doing, but he is using us for his own ends. What will you do if Herod simply sends him back? Well, you do look on the dark side of things, don't you? Yes, but what will you do? I'll face that when it happens. You're playing a dangerous game. I've been a soldier for a long time. So have you. Have I ever lost a battle? Pilate has sent him to me. Apparently so, Your Majesty. Unusually diplomatic of him, wouldn't you say? Indeed, Your Majesty, without precedent. Bring the prisoner and the high priest to me. Is there a good reason why I should hear this case? I believe there is a good reason why you should not, Your Majesty. Hmm? Galilee is this man's home province. You are the Tetrarch of Galilee. He has a certain following, and I suggest that you run the risk of antagonizing a great many of your loyal subjects. Any other suggestion? Your Majesty, I suggest that as the case against this man and the evidence has come from Jerusalem, let him be brought before you as a token of respect for the Romans. Then send him back to Pilate. Let the onus of his death, if his death is what they want, rest upon the high priest here in Jerusalem. And I'm Pontius Pilate himself. We'll see. I've heard much about you. I would be very happy to witness a simple demonstration of your wonderful power. Small feat of magic, perhaps? And not a big miracle. A small miracle would do. He can do nothing. He is a false prophet. It might help your case if you were more cooperative. He has been found guilty of blasphemy. I don't care for your charges and legalities. My friends want to see this man perform. I want to see things from this man that I've never seen before. Your prisoner not only refuses to perform for me, but he has the ill grace to refuse to reply when I speak to him. You will perform one small miracle for us, won't you? You can hear me, can't you? Look, is he deaf? No. He isn't deaf and he certainly isn't mute. Don't you understand? I'm a king. Your behavior is an affront to royal dignity. He also claims to be a king. A king? You're a king of nothing and a monarch of no one. <laughs> what a ridiculous king you make. <laughs> Herod sent him back. You were right. For once I wish you were wrong. And don't remind me what I should have done with the rebels. What now? Now that I've left my flank exposed, I've got to make a change in my battle plan.
do better. Citizens of Jerusalem, in compliance with the concordat signed with the Hebrew people by the Roman administration, Rome has agreed to free one prisoner found guilty of a capital offense. This must be done during the feast of the Passover. This year, it is the pleasure of His Excellency Pontius Pilate, Procurator of Judea, to let the people make the choice. <laughs> The governor wishes you to choose between two prisoners. Jesus of Nazareth, known to you as Yeshua by yourself, charged with sedition. And Barabbas of Jerusalem, guilty of insurrection and the murder of a Roman soldier. Barabbas is to be crucified. If I let him go, what am I to do with this man? To the cross with him! Give us Barabbas! That's enough. Cut him down. Jews! Yes! 
you. Pick it up and carry it. Pick it up and carry it! Move! Move! Is it accomplished? Accomplished. I want no more accusations from you. I'm your father. You must respect me. Even though you send this man to his death? Yes. Better one man should die than a whole nation be torn apart. I have always believed that. I still do. He's on his way to Golgotha. 